Hey, so I just want to talk a little bit about my favorite example of multidimensional data um, and one that might surprise you. So sometimes when I talk to students about this, um, we used to talk about this in, you know, in class and it was like, you know, I think people were sort of surprised that this is an example of multidimensional data because you don't always experience it that way. Um, but what we're looking at here is an audio waveform. Um, and what I'm showing you here, um, if you look at the top and the bottom, um, these are waveforms, so this is essentially the measure, you know, what is sound, right? So sound is the measure of, you know, uh, pressure at a particular point in space, right? Air pressure. Um, and sound waves or changes in air pressure allow us to communicate with each other and allow us to, you know, express our feelings through song and, you know, um, also accompany, you know, visual experiences like when you go to a movie and things like that. And obviously sound is an incredibly important sense, right, that humans use in a variety of different ways. Um, but the thing is that sound can also be different at different points in space, right? Like when you go to a concert, for example, um, you know, you're, you have two ears, right? You probably have noticed that. Uh, um, and your two ears are essentially measuring the pressure in the air at two different points in space. And in fact, there's actually a fair amount of uh, neural circuitry in your brain that is using these two signals to do a variety of different things. So for example, that's what allows you to localize things in space when you hear a noise. The fact that you, your brain can kind of sense where that noise is coming from is really entirely based on the fact that you do have two ears. If you only had one ear, it would be very, very difficult to figure it out. But with two ears, your brain can do things like figure out, well, the sound arrives slightly earlier at my right ear than my left ear, and so the sound is probably off to the right somewhere. So when you put on headphones and you listen to music, those headphones, you have two ears, those headphones have two ear, you know, I've got my headphones right here. They've got a right and a left, and they're actually labeled. And you might have wondered, like, why does it matter, right? And the reason it matters, got my headphones on, is because when people create music, um, and also, you know, any type of sound to accompany a TV show or to accompany a movie, um, they think about, there's this whole process of audio engineering, and there are different signals that are being fed to the right ear and to the left ear. So even in the simplest of setups, right, when you just put on a pair of headphones, right, um, you are already experiencing multi-dimensional data, right? What are the dimensions? Well, one of the dimensions is time, right? The other dimension is the measure of the pressure wave, right? Uh, but so far, that just feels like it's just normal linear data, right? I have a series of samples, I put them in order. The extra dimension comes from the fact that there are actually two separate signals, right? There's a signal that goes into your right ear, and there's a signal that goes into your left ear. And by manipulating those signals, the people that create music do things like make a band sound like the drummer is over there or over there. And there's this whole process that goes into audio engineering to create different sonic experiences for you when you're listening, um, even just through headphones, right? So that's already multidimensional data. This is also a place I want to point out where this whole idea of row and column just totally disintegrates, right? I mean, you're right. There's no rows and columns here, right? There are multiple signals. There's multiple dimensions of this signal, and you could use a multidimensional array to store audio data, but it doesn't make any sense to talk about rows and columns, right? It's samples and tracks, right? Those are the terms that audio engineers use. Now, maybe someday we'll go to movies again, and if you go to movies, next time you go, you might want to kind of look around, uh, because in a movie theater, there's not just two audio tracks, there can be eight different audio tracks. So they might be two speakers in the front of the movie theater, two speakers in the back of the movie theater. There's usually a speaker right under the screen that's used for dialogue. So when people are talking, the dialogue is fed through that speaker, making it easier to understand. And then sometimes there's speakers both on the bottom and on the top of the room. Sometimes there's a separate speaker for low frequency sound, known as a subwoofer. And this is how, in a movie theater, you know, one of the, you know, it's fun to watch movies at home, right? But one of the things you get in a theater is you actually really do get like much, much higher quality sound experience because of all these extra signals, right? And so there are actually six, eight, ten sometimes different audio signals 
They're not being fed into the room, and that's what makes it sound like you know the the, the car, some the explosion that just happened or whatever happened kind of behind you and, and to your right. Um, and so by manipulating the signals that are being sent, they're all being received by your ears, but by manipulating the different signals that are being sent from those different points in the theater, you can create these really cool experiences. So anyway, you know, my, my favorite example of multidimensional data, photos are multidimensional data, sound is multidimensional data. Most data in the world that we work with has this tendency very easily to acquire extra dimensions. And so I think it's kind of fun to point that out with sound. It's even the simplest sonic experience that you have of just putting down headphones already takes you uh, beyond a single linear dimension.